this estate is Woodpecker Estate, Milton Court Estate, but growing up, or oh, people we know it as the ghetto. Court Estate, the ghetto. Uh, it brings back memories when I sit here, man. Um, I remember when I was young, I used to just kind of be intimidated to come to the shops. I just see so much guys out here chilling. So, yeah, it's just a lot of memories, man. I had fun times, though. Like, before all this girl stuff, the estate, before they knocked down the buildings, there used to be so many buildings, a big building here. It was fun. We had a lot of fun, man. Um, like, I could just remember just, just feeling as if I was in the best estate in the world. You know, until that one summer when I was walking back and I got asked if I was a girl boy. And then that's when I felt like things changed. Even standing there, I get a flashback when I was like about 14, 15. And the guys on the motorbike come past. And one of them had their hands in the other and in the pocket. And he's got like a weapon in there and he's looking at us slowly, but we were young, he was after like the older lot. That was the first time that I, you know, really saw something like that where they're just contemplating whether to, you know, aim at us or not. Consequences of being a ghetto boy was um, obviously when a rival gang comes or sees you or catches you, then you're gonna be liable for the wrath of what uh, um, the ghetto boy has done to them. The worst feeling was that it, it's like as if it was becoming normal. That we just, you know, we're accepting it in the society we live in that you can die any day. It was just programmed in your mind that this is what happens when you just live in these, in these environments that you grew up in. Because we were ghetto boys, so our back and forth was mainly Peckham, a bit of Woolwich. It was crazy, I always saw bigger guys. I can remember at the, um, when we was at the top of the hill, talk to some girls with my friend and then a car rolls up and this guy's just waving knives and just point he just pointed um when they pointed directly at me I said you I'm gonna fucking kill you and at that time it's like I wanted to shit myself you get me like my heart was like oh shit and I'm just turning and start sprinting down the hill run all the way down all the way down to here but I was like Fuck, you know, I don't know this guy, he don't know me, but because I'm just about, he don't, he, he don't know me, but I'm from this area. So you, there's hate, I'm gonna, so that was important us, that's, that's, that's how it was. Now, what do you do? Suppose I was walking and they kind of jumped out on me, it would have been a whole different scenario. Anytime a car could whiz round or, or anything, people can jump out and attack you. So common sense, and then if you ain't got nothing, you're sitting, we call it slipping. Like you're, you're, you're naked, you're walking with nothing. You know what I'm saying? I remember that little bush there, we keep a lot of weapons just tucked in there, just in case, you know, something happens. There was a time where um, my big sister, who's almost sort of like a mum to me, she come and took me from this estate for like two years. I cleaned up, man, I cleaned up, I cleaned up. Bring me church, I was going to college, everything. And then I came back. Man, once you're in it, you're, you know, you're stuck. And that was the early days of when we was young. And then there was no way out. This is it, you got to just ride it out till you get old. When I was in court and they said the verdict, guilty, was like a, it's like a blow in the chest. It's like, huh? What did you say? And I can remember it like, I can remember that like, like yesterday, just sitting up, hearing the verdict. They said, how do you find him? And there was a jury, there was one guy holding a paper, and it was like he couldn't wait to say guilty. It was like as if he sneezed and just said it. It was like, they said, how do you find him? He just went, guilty. And I was just like, what? And he said, count two, guilty. And I was like, 
Wow. On that bus back, just looking out that window. Now, now when you've been found, you're, you're guessing the number. I didn't get sentenced there, I have to go back. I'm guessing the number in my head, I'm thinking, oh, okay, seven. I'm gonna get seven years. That's what I'm thinking. I've done six months already. I was in Belmarsh at first for two years and I went to Brixton. I think a day is too long in prison <laughs> for me. It's all how much you can handle. Someone will do two months and say it's too long. Every day is long. Picture being in a place you just don't want to be there. You just don't want to be there, but you have to pretend to be happy. Every now and again when I was in, uh, in Belmarsh, uh, I always catch someone that was doing a life sentence do a stare. It was as if like, They'll just be staring in the midst, like as if they've forgotten everything, but they're just quietly like that, just staring, as if like the sentence has just hit them, that like, they're here forever. Uh, the first person I shared with, I think I just got my six and a half years and he got his 25. And it was like, I can't, I, I can't like, at the time I couldn't feel his pain, I was kind of indulging my pain. At the time I'm thinking, oh, listen, I've got six and a half years and he's got his 25. And then, like, the next, the funny enough, check this, the next day, they moved him out into to a single cell. Then that next day, he just, out of the blue, just sliced someone out of the blue, asked them, I think they said, oh, I've got some coffee, often coffee, came in, just sliced his face. And I was just sharing a cell with him a, a night before. I was trying to ask the guy why he didn't know. At the same time, I was like, wow. Hold on, the other day I was just in the cell with him, telling him, brother, you're shaking the bunk bed too much, stop it, what are you doing? Are you having a party up there? Wait, what's wrong with you? You know, chill. And, you know, the next day he's just made his razor blade and toothbrush and slashed someone across their face. I've seen a grown man cry tears, I've seen a grown man break down because of a sentence. And then you come outside and you see youths that are still, you know, about this gang banging thing. And you think, shit. Do you know, a 30-wreck a 30, a 30 sentence is round the corner for you. You don't even know it. And when it comes and it hit, the reality hits you, you're not going to... I've seen people that when they were out, they were known, they had big names, they would do this, do that, people feared them. And then um, the inside crying, you know, I'm doing a 30. And when they gave me six and a half years, it was like it was two counts in it. So when they said, the judge said, you know, I want to give you... Uh, it starts at eight. It said eight years it starts at. But they looked at some of my, you know, said you're a talented boxer. And that's why I always loved boxing, because it's always saved me. That, you know, that shaved off a bit for me then, innit? Boxing means that kind of self-discipline, self-motivation. You know, in other sports, you can pass the ball to someone and get out of trouble. You know, you, you've got to lift up yourself and get yourself through it. You know, training is almost like you're dying, but you have to keep going. And it just reminds me of that's, that, that motivation that I've got in myself is what helped me even get through the sentence is the same thing. Like when I got sentenced, I had to pick myself up and keep going. And that's what boxing is. You know, you're frying shots and trading. Hit, but don't be hit. And even when you do get hit, and you know, you're feeling tired, it's dragging yourself up. So it's more, than, it's more to just violence, as some people see it. It's controlled violence. It's an art. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's passion to um, the human body. So, so magnificent that, you know, you train it up and it just 
And like I say it just it just retaliates. You know, you push it through something, and it and uh, you know you, you throw your jab a thousand times in the mirror, then you get better at jabbing. It means a lot. I, I, some days I couldn't live without. It. I've tried to leave it, and that's what's always kept kept me coming back. It just keeps me level-headed, man. And it means it means a lot to me. Um, boxing has helped us, saved us in terms of, um, you know, we could be even in harder situations than on the streets. Sometimes when you know you can handle yourself, you can uh, foresee a situation and not react in a certain way because you know you can handle yourself. I've got my paper signed to go out, but on the system it said no, that I'm certain that it's not there. And I'm trying to tell the officer the situation. Because he's in a bad mood, he said, no, you're not going out. And the rage that, in, that hit me, it was just like, oh no, man, it was like, fire burning inside me, like, I don't think my mum's dead. And you just don't give a shit. I'm not sure RIP, mum, love you, miss you. Yeah, listen. My kind heart died, my mum died. So I don't fear homicide, no karma, don't care about drama, just live with that beef like a farmer. This ain't rap. I you just gotta have a promise in your head, one day this is gonna be over. Every day, one day this is gonna be over. And it's every day is a new challenge. It's like Groundhog Day, every day is repeat, you know what I mean? They tell you when to eat, tell you when to sleep. And you get me, you got people that are playing God with your life. We won't drop you. So I feel unstoppable on the road to success and I ain't stopping the all. Mum's dead, so I ain't got no fear. You heard what I said, I ain't got no fear. My worst fear happened and I'm still here. What don't kill you, make you strong and every day I'm getting strong. When my mum died, that was like a big part torn out of me. And I ain't got nothing to take my mind off it, but I'm in prison, a place I don't want to be. I don't want to be. Uh, officers being rude. I remember mean, my officers were just so rude to me. Someone had to drag me back because of frustration that was in me that you're just doing this because the power you have over me. She went and found a new man. Girl, come visit me. Thought I was going to be a man. Man took peace from me. Meant to be my right hand. Coach died. Mum died. All this in my jail time. I went from heartbreak to trick me. From heartbreak to heart battered. Feels like my heart shattered. So I picked up the pieces and stuck it together. I surprised it's still beating. Mummy died when she was sleeping. While sitting in a chair, dozed off, our stop spirit floating in the air. You can, never, you can say any bad thing about me, and my mum knows that. She will say he's a good boy, that's my son. No, that's my son. You know what I mean? Like, though, obviously, um, through her community, I was always known as the bad one. And that's why, um, when I went to jail, I really wanted to prove that I could make something of myself and show how lucky she is to have me as a son. And there's those regrets that like the last time when I saw her, that I wished, you know, I kind of, Got to spend an extra five minutes. Do you get what I'm saying? Though my last thing was to kiss her on her cheek. Um, there's a lot more I wish I could have said. You know, or well, I know that if she saw this now, you know, she would say, "I look at my son." You know, so she would have been proud. It's easy to just give up. It takes someone very strong to actually go within yourself and pick yourself up. Why still remains this pest? R.I.P. Man. Enjoy the little things, man. Just the little things in life that we see so simple. Talking to people, around a time limit, walking out the door, closing it, going back through it, sitting in a park, you know, not in a, a prison yard, walking around in circles, not going nowhere. You get what I'm saying? I can walk in a straight line here, and I'm going to keep going to my destination. Like, right now, to me, this is a blessing. I can talk about my life to you guys. And it's something, it's a, it's a picture of someone painting it. If I can put it in a one word, I'm gonna enjoy, I'm gonna enjoy the blessings, but still be hustling. And as I said, I brought that down, that don't mean criminal activity, that means um, juggling all the talents that God has given me. You know, there were some times when I was young growing up, or when I was in deep trouble, or you're on the back foot, and you used to think it's just because I'm from this estate, or when, those times we, me and my friends, we called it that, the cursed estate. You know, so much, so much pain. Yeah, those times I did think, you know, if I grew up somewhere else, things might have been different. 
But then I can't change the past. It is where I grew up and it's made me here now. And I don't think I would change myself for anything for the world right now. So um, I think, as I said, what I've gone through is for a reason, to um, tell other people what it's like, you know, so they can be informed of, you know, how it is growing up in a state instead of it just being judged, you know what I mean? There's some people that, you know, if I'm your youth, they need help. They're stuck there, man. They don't know what to do. They're just a problem of their environment. As soon as the youth centre started shutting down and shit, what the fuck was he meant to do? Like, he was looking out for us. He come and took us somewhere. No one, man. It's only lately I drive around and start seeing a few basketball hoops put up, but there was, you know what I mean? Like, when I was guy in boxing, I was taking myself there. You know what I mean? There was no type of community fund coming to see if we're talented, come take us up, you know? So what were we to do with young and dumb? You know, some young youths I was talking to in their state, and it's like, their minds are gone, they're just going through the cycle, like, they're not, it's like, ah, it's frustrating, you can't get in their heads. I want to show some of the hard work that, you know, I'm going through to try and get my life back in track. Some people don't see the hard work, they just see the front line of things where if you ever make it or you don't. I want to inspire others also out there, inspire young people, inspire people that's gone to prison, they feel that, you know, they can't, see some people that gone to prison, they feel they can't do nothing. Like, that's it, it's the end of their life. No, it's not, it's not. You can pick yourself up and continue to do what you do. So I hope, really, this touches other people that they can actually, you know, be something out there, man change their life for I'm hoping they can see this. Or some people that might judge me, that they can actually see and see that, you know, the, the, the hard work I'm trying to put in to turn my life around or to even make something happen so that others can, you know, to look at it. So that, you know, my daughter can look at it and say, ah, oh, that's my daddy. For people who think that they can't do nothing with their life and they even in a better position can make something happen. So. I just want to be that example that, you know, I want people when they watch this, they, you know, they get up and start striving, they get off of their ass and, and make something happen with their life because they can do it. The same driving force that is within me, it's also within them to waking up and go and do it. When you put your mind to something, you can get it done. You can get it done. You've got that willpower, you've got that belief, you know. When you believe in yourself, there's power in it. I see it as a deck of cards, man, you got a bad hand. And you know, just to, from that bad hand to even just win that game, you know, that's, that, it's a challenge to me right now, and I'm, I'm gonna make it happen. Uh, future's bright, promising, exciting. Man, blessing. Yeah.
not sing Cause I know, I know how it feels oh, I know how it feels to be free Yeah, yeah, I know how it feels And 